All right, so if you wanna know some of the best ways to invest in real estate, even during a housing bubble, or if the real estate market is crashing, it literally doesn't matter because this is one of my favorite strategies to increase the amount of profit that you get and reducing the amount of risks that we are exposed to. In case you don't know who I am though, my name is Davin Sundvik with the House Hacker Tribe and we give real estate investing advice to people who want to optimize and profit more with their real estate purchases. So without any further ado, let's get right into the content. Now, I can't just give away this strategy right at the beginning of the video, mainly because it is a little bit of an advanced topic. So we gotta cover some basics first, and then along the way, you'll understand why this, con why this concept really does work in your favor. One of those things that we're gonna have to address though, is this is not a comprehensive investing video. This video is for people who might have watched our how to prepare for a housing market crash video and realized that they just simply weren't qualified or weren't ready to prepare for a real estate housing market crash. And so they're watching this video to make sure that they can best prepare for a real estate housing market crash and still have exposure to the upside. So if you're a tenant, this and you're looking to buy a house, this video is absolutely for you because it'll help you pick a better loan product that will give you less risk and greater returns. And so in order to do that, we have to talk about a concept called opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is simply what you would have saved versus the profit loss of a decision. And so it's a more accurate way to compare a decision versus a just a price comparison or a direct way of comparing risk. Because when you have extreme upside, which is our investing technique, you essentially give the bank most of the risk while you keep most of the process, pro, uh, bleh, profits, which might sound crazy, but it's actually a, just a legitimate strategy that you can use. But most people just don't understand why this exists or how they can use it to their best benefit. So we're actually going to give you the numbers and calculations on extreme upside to make sure that you are using one of the best real estate strategies, even if you're buying in a housing bubble. So let's just say that a home in this particular area sells for $100,000. Now, where I live in Las Vegas and in Henderson, there's no way you're going to find a home in great condition for $100,000. But let's just say we lived somewhere else where the housing market is about $100,000 for a starter home. And for this home, you could put 5% down. Now, I wouldn't call this extreme upside, but it gets into that extreme upside territory. And so it's going to make these numbers a little bit more conservative. If you had maybe like 99% uh, financed by the bank or 1% down, then you're giving the bank even more risk and you're giving yourself even more upside potential, which is what we would always want. But like I said, for the video and for the numbers, just so it doesn't seem like these profits are insane or crazy, we're only going to use 95%. So you can put $5,000 down and you can control a $100,000 asset or a home. And we're just going to say that a home is going to be our unit of measurement for our money, for our $5,000 worth of money. Now, if the market goes down by 10%, what are we actually saving? Well, we're only saving 10% of our down payment and we would have spent $4,500 to control a home instead of $5,000, which is great. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I always like saving some money, but let's compare this to the opportunities of what if we bought and the market goes up. Now, if we didn't buy and the market goes up, I think the obvious answer is we'd be buying a house at $110,000, right? So a 10% increase instead of a 10% decrease and during that increase, we said, ah, man, like, I don't want the market to go up anymore. I'm worried about uh, the market continuing to go up and housing just getting more expensive. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy now. Well, that person would have paid $5,500 from waiting. So there's only a $1,000 difference from waiting in either scenario. So some people might say, well, for a thousand bucks, I mean, I'm really, I'm willing to make a risk, you know, for a thousand dollar difference, I'm either paying $500 in, in my favor or I'm paying $5,000 out of my favor, I'll take that 50-50 chance and see if I make more money uh, by doing this. But what we fail to mention is the amount of profit that we would have had if we had bought now versus later. And so 
if we buy now and the market goes up, then we profit by $15,000. Well, we profit by $10,000, but essentially we have $15,000 that we own from our initial investment of $5,000. And so a $10,000 profit compared to a $500 savings is definitely a way, way different comparison than a $500 uh, burden versus a $500 savings. So now you can see why some people might wanna buy earlier rather than later. But what's the risk if they buy early? Well, if they buy early and the market goes down, they don't have to sell it. I mean, if they plan on holding this piece of property for a really long period of time, then temporary changes in the price going down is gonna cause maybe a little bit of emotional damage, but it's really not gonna cause any financial hardship. The only thing that they really lost out on is that $500 that they could have kept in their pocket instead of putting it towards a down payment. So now we have a more accurate comparison. We have a $500 uh, benefit if we wait and the housing market goes down, and we have a potential uh, $10,000 loss plus a $500,000 loss if the market goes up and we weren't prepared for it to go up. So we compare that profit loss to our potential savings and we can see that if we were to flip a coin and say, hey, would I risk $500 to get $10,000 if it lands on heads, we would take that bet all day long and keep flipping. And if we you know, lost $500 once on it, we'd say, all right, cool. We lost 500 bucks, we're gonna get it next time. We're gonna get our 10,000. We're gonna get our 10,000 next time. So. That is how you accurately assess opportunity costs. So FOMO is not working against you. Instead, opportunity cost is working in your favor. In case you're new to the channel, definitely give us a like and a subscribe and comment down below so we can see your feedback. We always appreciate feedback from our viewers because it's how we make these videos better. And if you're watching for the first time, thanks for watching and have a great day.